Looking for me to let's go Take me on this journey home I don't wanna wait no Hey y'all, it's your girl Erica Vane back again with another amazing All-American video. And this time I'm on camera, child. So you know it's special, you know it's real. I am joined by one of our amazing Erica Vane insiders, Naya. Hey girl. Hey. And this is a start of a series that I'm going to be bringing to the channel where I grab the insiders as well as new members. And we're going to just talk about the show. We're going to be able to dialogue about it because while I love making videos for y'all and telling y'all what I think, I definitely want to be able to hear what you are thinking and be able to converse about, you know, our thoughts, whether we agree or disagree. So that is what this will be. These are my All American Talkbacks first episode. In this episode, we are going to be talking about predictions for episodes episode 14, how we feel about the season thus far, some of our faves, some of our not so faves, and a little bit more it's sprinkled in between. So if you want to check that out, you want to know more, keep watching. So I asked Naya a question and actually we should go ahead and insert it here in reference to how she grounds herself or which one way that she grounds herself or sings herself each day. And she gave a phenomenal answer. So let's listen to that real quick. I think I'm really learning to be in the comfort of myself, which mm -hmm. I think we should all take time to do is like be comfortable with being, you know, in our own space by ourselves and like centering ourselves before we, you know, interact with other people. Cause you know, it's a lot of energy out in the world <laughs> and trying it's to like delegate and manage energy. that, manage that <laughs> along, along with your own. And if you are not centered and if you were like, you know, your energy's all over the place, then I can only imagine how that is going outside in the world. So yeah, that's, you know, music is like probably the number one thing and just, you know, being alone in my space and just zoning out. Okay, great. So Naya talks about people being okay with being alone. And I think that that is a backdoor theme that is currently frolicking all up and through season three of All American, specifically with everyone's favorite character or most people's favorite character, because I've always been clear, Spencer is my favorite, Olivia is my second favorite. Olivia Latrice Baker does not know how to sit with herself does not know how to center herself <laughs> and is doing a lot of things that I feel like lit could be alleviated. She could avoid so much trouble if she was better with just being with herself. What are your thoughts, Naya? <laughs> no, I agree. And you know what's funny is, <laughs> oh my God, I told you off screen that I did a podcast with shout out to Lexi Redman and her um, film study, All American Podcast. You guys check that out. And I did an episode talking about Olivia and sort of potentially her arc um, after episode 11. Mm -hmm. like episode 11 where she releases the body cam footage. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> and I just, oh my gosh, like this is on, you know, this is on the record too. You guys can go check that out. Me saying, oh, well, you know, I think, you know, this is, you know, I think it can only go up for Olivia. And, you know, I think <laughs> this is going to be some really great development and she's going to be all right. I don't think that aged well after episode 13. <laughs> so, because her movements in episode 13 were like, ooh, girl, I really, you know, and that's just me trying to give, you know, always trying to give Olivia the benefit of the doubt, but you know, sort of going back to what, I think you said it before episode 13 and sort of her releasing the body cam footage and the possible repercussions of that, sort of that, you know, it could be another way of her fixating on another thing. Cause we know, you know, she has, a, you know, has a habit of doing that, fixating on other issues and other people's problems. And yeah, that's starting to manifest a little bit and I'm scared and, um, yeah, I think Olivia, uh, Olivia is still, I think, having trouble with just sitting with herself and just finding other things to channel her emotions in, like, in a positive way. Like, you know, maybe art or, you know, something else. Or, you know, I think the activism is fine, but making sure that you're channeling your emotions in a way that is helping the cause and not like being a complete de detriment to your own mental health in the process i'm rambling but no that <laughs> what i'm saying is that you know 
and this is I thought the same thing at the end of season two like the fact that she really just does not do well with like the quiet and like being by herself and sort of being by yourself means that you have to really sit with your own thoughts and your own feelings and it's something that Olivia has not done well with and would rather you know drown that stuff out with other things and so you know right now we're in a place where I'm not like I don't think either one of us are saying she's in a bad way but you know it it's a combination of a lot of things and it could be could be potentially bad if she doesn't rein it in which you know I I don't know if it's gonna happen after episode 13 I'm hoping that she's gonna rein it in a little bit but I I don't know I think Olivia is a work in progress still. For sure. And honestly, I am just now wrapping up the Olivia sobriety video. We're actually, um, this is something I have not even talked about yet anywhere, but we are actually going to be adding memberships to Erica Vane TV. And we've decided that we're going to release the Olivia sobriety journey video as a members only video. That video is 55 minutes long where I literally go through from season one all the way up to season three and break down all of the major moments and key things that people should really pay attention to for you to really key in on where she is within her sobriety journey from where we meet her in episode one all the way up until the start of season three. So I don't go all the way to season three. And it wasn't until I sat down <laughs> and was making that long ass video that I literally got full validation and confirmation that Olivia cannot be alone and that is part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Olivia started using drugs and alcohol, well, started using drugs because she did not want to be alone. She cannot be alone. And uh, we don't know all of this about her before, you know, the premiere of the pilot, right? So when they were 16, we don't know anything about that before, but if you even just think about her being a twin, she's never really had to be alone. Right. So that like, let's start there. And when you get to the end of season two and you see like even going back and rewatching that and hearing her words and her saying, I thought I was alone. So I picked up this bottle. That's literally what happened. I thought I was alone. I just took a sip of this because I thought I was alone. For me and watching how things are playing out in season three, it still, it still was just throwing up red flags left and right because you have this. I didn't, I didn't have the full confirmation that I had before about her not being able to be alone, but I, I felt it. Like I felt it in my spirit of like, girl, you got something going on. But then looking at how she behaves in season three, it's like, oh no, this stuff is red flags. While so many people were like, yeah, let Olivia do what she wants and express herself and do this and do that. A lot of people don't realize that in some of the actions that we take and some of the decisions that we make, we wind up hurting ourselves while we're trying to express ourselves or do us or do whatever we want. Sometimes whatever you want is going to get you stuck. <laughs> like, let's right. just be real. And that's what I feel like we are seeing play out with Olivia. And then specifically when I speak about Olivia Spencer not being ready for a relationship, I don't think anybody is ready for a relationship who cannot be by themselves. That is just period. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, that's real life. So, I mean, you know, Literally. I, I think people, I think people tend to romanticize certain things um, that probably shouldn't be romanticized because, you know, um, and I mean, and that's why I, I don't, I think people misunderstand the things that you say because, I mean, you're you're applying, you know, these things that they're talking about on the show to real life, which I think that's the point. I think that's why they do it. And I think people tend to look at the surface instead of looking deeper. And it's like, yeah, you know, Olivia and Spencer are great together. And it's, it has the potential to be something really amazing. And we've seen little bits of that. No one is discounting their connection at all. We've all at seen all. it. It's, it's um, beautiful. But it's like, do you want them to happen for the sake of them happening? And then it falls apart within the next two episodes because they're both not in the best place. And when you say Spencer's in a better place than Olivia, I mean, that's true. We have seen <laughs> Spencer since the beginning be a very grounded individual, even though at when we were first introduced to him, there was a lot of emotional angst and anger there. 
we've seen him deal and unpack that as the season has gone, you know, the seasons have gone on. And with Olivia, I feel like it's always two steps forward and then it's like five steps back. And I'm not saying that that's not realistic or, I mean, that's real life. I think we all go through that. Um, and that's not, oh, just because of her addiction either. I think it's, that definitely heightens things. But I think with Olivia, there's a constant struggle with um, just herself and her battling her own thoughts and feelings. And I think rather than her dealing with them and unpacking them like Spencer does, you know, we've seen her tend to drown it out, you know, and run away from it. And I think that's only been a detriment to her. And we've seen it literally overcome her. The darkest place we've ever seen her is in this season. Cause we didn't see, mm -hmm. you know, the, the events leading up to her overdose. You know, we only were introduced to the overdose and we were like, okay, well things must've been pretty dark. But yep, I yep. think being able to see the culmination of one, seasons one and two, and then where we are in three and then episode nine, we actually were able to see the manifestations of that and how dark it got. And I think in episode nine, I think it's a culmination of seasons one and two. I think it was easy yep. for us to be like, oh, well, she seems to be on the right track at the end of season one and sort of in season two where she was getting into the, you know, um, a little bit of the activism, I think, with the, you know, the, the cotillion and sort of the, that group and but i think still behind all of that it was masking something deeper and i think we've seen that with olivia where she will you know she she has to keep busy like she can't sit still <laughs> she has to dive into something or or someone and that's all a, a, a part of not being able to deal with who you are internally and i think she's never been able to develop who she is internally so you know it's sort of her finding her her identity through other people and through other things and you know and, and that's scary for that's me scary yeah that's it is scary. scary for me to see her like to care about olivia for people to say i don't care about her it's like crazy because it's like i actually feel like olivia is my little sister like i look at her character like i look at my two younger sisters and i'm just like if they were doing this stuff i would literally be saying the exact same things that i'm saying on these videos and that is the biggest thing for the red flag for me with Bolivia in that one you haven't had time to figure out your identity or ground yourself in yourself so you're now going to do that in others and while Spence is a great guy and y'all have amazing chemistry that's still dangerous because what if he changes what if he shifts if you place all of your value all of your stock, all of your emotional control. Like people were commenting on my videos, like, well, Spencer can calm her down. Well, Spencer can do this. Like everything that Olivia has wrong, Spencer can fix it. If he has to do that, what happens when Spencer goes? What happens if Spencer just decides that he's going to date somebody else or Lord forbid dies or something that like happens to Spencer and he no longer can fulfill that space? Now she has no one. Now she can't do it for herself. So why would you not want someone to be able to develop the things that they need to be able to prosper in this life on their own so that when they do get into a relationship, when they do go into these friendships, when they do go off to college and just do other things that are part of life, they are able to do so from a stable place that no one else can make or break them. I think it's very scary when I look and see people like Spencer balances Olivia out and I made the comment of, I don't feel like this is balanced. I feel like Spencer can definitely calm her down. He definitely has, you know, influence over her now. He definitely can push her to do certain things, but that means he also has a lot of power over her and she doesn't have enough power over herself. What do you think right. That? Yeah. And I, yeah, I, I definitely agree. And I think people don't think about that aspect. It's like in episode 13, there was a real, I'm sorry to say it, but I know y'all like to hear it, but there was an imbalance in what was going on. It was like, you know, it was two different extremes. You have Spencer who's like, listen, I just want to plan my mama's graduation and I just want to focus on black joy, which, you know, is very important. And I just want to focus on being here. Meanwhile, we got Olivia who's running around <laughs> like a <laughs> rabid dog. <laughs> you know try to fight for the cause but it, doing it in, in in ways that they're not effective they're not you know fueling anything into the cause in in a positive way and also it's taking you out in the process and we saw a lot of spencer having to reel her in reel her back i didn't see olivia doing that for spencer in 
that episode. Um, it was a lot of Spencer pulling her back from the edge. I feel like with Olivia, it's like one extreme or the other. It's like she plays it all the way back and is very much of a wallflower as we have seen, or it's it like full things. force. Right. It, full for, it's like running away from everything in the world. And I mean, you guys can take that how you want to take it, but that we've seen her run, duck, dodge. We've seen her do all of that. All of the above. The Olympics. All of it. And then it's like full force. Now we're seeing real full throttle. I'm just gonna drive until the wheels come off. And because I feel it, I gotta do right. it. I don't need to think about it. It's I know it's right. I gotta do something. I can't just sit back. And it's like, no, you can. You, you can take can. a step. You can take a, a breath, sis. It's all good. Right. Exactly. That's all we be asking this girl. Just take a breath. Just think through things <laughs> before you do them because everything has consequences and while your heart might be in the right place and your intentions might be there it doesn't always you know manifest that way and i think with the activism no one's saying girl this is a great cause to fight for this is a cause that needs to be fought for and it's something that you know is as a collective for black people it's just a fight that needs to be um fought and it sucks that we still have to fight it and i'm all here for it but what I want for Olivia is just make sure that you're doing it in a way that is like positive for you and your mental health. Like, because if you're just going out there being full throttle and, and, and just, you know, not thinking, being reckless, you, you're, you're gonna, you're, she's going to take herself out. It, she's just going to drain herself, deplete herself completely before anything can be really done. And ultimately, potentially end up in a darker place than we've ever seen her in. That's honestly my second biggest thing that I'm mm -hmm. very scared about with Olivia. Because yeah. to me, I feel like with season three, I saw some stuff that I was just like, I never thought I would see this from Olivia. But I also didn't know Olivia that well. Because they didn't go that far deep into her in seasons one and two. And I honestly don't think that we have seen her actually hit rock bottom yet, what she's potentially capable of. Now, I don't think it's going to come anytime soon. Like, I definitely see if they, you know, move through and are getting to, like, episode, I mean, seasons five and six and if she's in college. Like, if they don't get her to a place where she's developed and she's able to process certain things, emotions, and handle, you know, her mental health better, then it, this is the stuff that sets the groundwork up for you to be able to get into a very sticky situation in college, get into a very sticky situation with a, another potential relationship that might not be good, and then end up in some stuff that you had no idea how you got there, but you were never solid to begin with. You were never okay with yourself. You were never confident. You never had any self-esteem. Like, you just never had the things that you really needed to be able to prepare you to meet some of the things that you were going to meet in the future. Like I said, Olivia is a work in progress. And, you know, we still have six more episodes to see. Right now, I'm in a place where I'm with Olivia where I'm like, all right, girl, we're, we're on shaking ground. Like, what's, what's going on? Like, are, are we going to, do I got to prepare myself? <laughs> I think you hit the nail on the head with her talking with the two extremes. Yes. And honestly, I'm just waiting for when do you settle? Like, when do you, when do you yeah, find here? the balance? Yeah. When do you start floating here? It's not that you can't make any mistakes. It's not that you can't get excited or anything like that. Because we saw, like, season one, Spencer was ridiculous. Angry as I don't know what. And if you guys would like me to go back and break down all of the episodes of season one, let me know I will. I'm sorry, I started breaking down the video. I mean, I started breaking down the episodes of season three. One of the things people got or give me sometimes is like, you don't say any of this about Spencer. Spencer isn't doing those things now. But season one, Spencer? Season one, Spencer needed to be gathered as well. Season right. one, Spencer lost his emotional and mental mind. So season one, Spencer lived on 10 for no right. damn reason and, and, and if y'all want me yeah. to talk about that let me know in the comment section down below because once season three is over i can break those videos down but go ahead naya right but i mean like if we want to you know make sort of a, a comparison or or sort of the with spencer and olivia you had spencer who was like let's say for example with the football team when he transferred to beverly and even when he was playing for south crunch on the beginning of the of uh, the show he was a very selfish player you know, very all about me, what I got to do on the field, not really thinking about the team and the fact that it's a team sport at the end of the day. And, you know, maybe that's a part of also, you know, a part of that is him having to feel like he has to fight, had to fight for everything. 
and the only way that he could really feel seen, you know, I mean, obviously that played a lot in with Corey, his dad feeling like, you know, he needed to be seen and feeling that connection with his dad. But when he transferred to Beverly, wasn't a team player at all, you know, or, and it was very angry, very emotional, <laughs> very oh off the God. rails on 10 all the time. <laughs> and he had to find the balance. And he's at a place where the balance is there. And with Olivia, we have not seen that yet. Not, no one's saying that it's not going to come. We want it to happen. You know, it's been, you know, we're on the third season, but Olivia's been through a lot and, you know, she hasn't dealt with any of it. It's like, I feel she hasn't unpacked any of it. We've seen Spencer unpack all of his stuff with, you know, from the beginning of the show. You know, we haven't gotten to that with Olivia yet. I think we've gotten pieces, but I feel like she's still got a lot of stuff to work through. And yeah. I don't know, people don't like to hear that, but I feel like, like I said, going back to this Olivia thing, do you want them to happen for the sake of happening? That's a real question. Do you want them to happen for the sake of happening just for them to break up within the next two episodes because it wasn't healthy? You know, you want, and this is just in real life, you want to be in a relationship where both you and the other person are in healthy, solid places within themselves. Because when you are, you can only bring that to the relationship and be good partners for each other. And right now it feels like, not that it's one-sided, but Spencer is just in a little bit more of an, of an, of a developed, mature place than Olivia is right now. And that's no shade to Olivia, but Olivia has just started getting back on the wagon and, you know, having to deal with all of that. And and then there's a lot going on, obviously, with the, the story right now with, you know, the with Tamika and the Black Lives Matter storyline. And so all of that combined, you know, there's that's a lot to unpack as well as other things that I don't know I feel like haven't been touched on or talked about. I don't know if we're going to really unpack Olivia. I hope that we do. Just in terms of, I feel like how she still got to the place that she got to in episode nine, I still feel like in a way I'm missing some of the dots. I feel like, I don't know, maybe a lot of what we've said or assumed is true, but I still feel like there's still something missing in terms of how we got to episode nine or even how we got to episode one of the season because that was like completely out of like left field like just seeing how olivia was moving was just like what what is what what, what's happening yeah it it did kind of it did kind of feel like it came out of left field i want to go back really quick to what you said about spencer's um maturity and being at a more grounded place one thing i also think that people don't think about with Olivia is that she's I don't think and this is just from what they've put on screen y'all not from what other people might have fantasized or made up in their mind and decided that that was what it was gonna be I don't think she is as experienced in love as Spencer is so for me from what we've seen on screen I think Spencer has been in love with Kia I think Spencer has been in love with Layla now, do I think that Spencer has Spencer loves Olivia more now and deeper than he has loved anybody in that way? 100%. Spencer is in love with Olivia 100%, deeply, uncontrollably. He don't even understand it. It's that it's that damn deep. Yes. Yes, but he's also have had other levels of progressing love. Olivia has not. Spencer to me seems like he is her very first love. Mhm. Which also makes this very tricky, y'all, because how many of those first loves actually make it? You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're thinking. You don't know what you're feeling. Spencer's first love didn't make it. They're great friends now, cool, but they didn't. She didn't make it. And I think that aside from where Olivia is with, you know, her sobriety journey and her mental health and all of that, we also have to think about her experience because sex doesn't just doesn't mean experience. Like she smashed Asher, but it was because she just wanted to do something to make herself feel important in that moment or to make herself feel seen or wanted in that moment. All of the other things that have happened, even her relationship with Chris, I feel like, and I did a video about it, I'll make sure I link it. That wasn't real either. That was something to do because Spencer and Layla happened and she needed something to happen for her. So while y'all are pushing for Bolivia to happen right now, you're 100% right of like, if they get together right now, that joint is ending. 
and it's going to crash and burn. It's not even just going to end. It's going to crash and burn because they're not ready on just multiple levels on each side for very yeah. different reasons. Yes. Right. And like the funny thing with Chris is like it could have been something. It could have been like that could have been the first love for Olivia. Like I hate to bring it, bring it to you guys. It could have been, but she, you know, sabotaged that before it could ever be anything. Spencer, I think definitely, like you said, is her first real love. And that's a beautiful thing from a person who has never experienced that kind of love before with her, you know, within herself and with another person there's nothing to go off of and i think that's why people misconstrue when you say spencer loves olivia more spencer has had has grown up in a foundation of love love has been at the heart of everything that he has done you know um grace leads by love it is something that she has poured into her kids and that is all really at the end of the day stripping away football everything that is the root and at the heart of who spencer is from Olivia, you know, I'm not trying to say that Billy and Laura don't love their kids and they didn't pour love into their kids, but I think it's, <laughs> it's I'm just gonna try. I'm trying to get the better of the doubt. They love their kids. They don't treat them. They good. love the way that they know how. I yeah, personally exactly. don't think that they know how to truly. The example that Olivia has, right? Olivia and Jordan, they, they didn't have that kind of example where, you know, with Grace, it was like, no, love is, you know, at the heart of everything. It is the most important thing. You know, if you don't have that, then, you, you know, you really have nothing. Like, um, Olivia and Jordan did not have that in the Baker household. It wasn't shown. And so I think, you, you know, they don't really know, or, you know, when we were first introduced to them, it's not, it's foreign. And I think it's still foreign for Olivia to be able to just express herself in words. And so going back to Olivia, it's a beautiful thing that that's her first love, but it can also, like you said, be a very dangerous thing when that is all, it's the first time that you're experiencing this. And also if you haven't poured that same love into yourself, then how are you then in turn going to be able to love someone else that way? And that's the difference between her and Spencer. Spencer Spencer, you know, loves him, loves himself. I mean, that's just what it is. He, we, we have not been shown any other. He's reason. more humble now, but right. he has always known Spencer was. Sh Spencer has never had a problem with confidence. Right, exactly, and that is something that it's like with Olivia. It's such a struggle sometimes, or a lot of the times, to watch her because it's like you have, you don't even know your own potential. You don't even see your own power because we've seen moments where Olivia is like yes like girl keep doing that that's what we want and then it's like <laughs> then it lasts for like a couple a couple glimmers and then it goes away because she she's just not the she's not she doesn't believe in herself or believe in her own power and so when you have that it it, it makes it hard to to see where she could be the a good partner for anyone yeah. Yep. And maybe that can, I think it's developing with Spencer, but you know, <laughs> it's like at what cost though? It's yeah. like, you don't want her to sort of just, you don't want Spencer to have to be the one to pour into the, pour her, pour these things into her if she's not pouring them into herself. Cause it, then it's like, okay. And if that is what needs to happen, then it needs to happen while they're still on a friend level. Mm -hmm. Because once you become a romantic partner, there needs to be an equal yoking or it doesn't work. Yeah. That's, it just doesn't y'all. I did not make the rules. <laughs> it just doesn't. If it's not an equal yoking. It might last for a month. It might last for a year, two years, but it ultimately will break if you never can balance things out and be able to provide what the other actually needs. And that is something that I think that Spencer would need in a relationship. We talked about this during the rewatch and we would have to do a completely other talk back about this topic. I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, mm -hmm. but we talked about Layla and how she came up and how everybody was like, Layla just threw herself at Spencer and she just threw herself in there. She was all over him. And it's like, no, Layla showed up as herself, her confident self. And Spencer was instantly attracted to it because of who Spencer was in that moment and who Layla was in that moment. And Olivia has all the makings 
to have the exact same confidence that Layla possesses freely, but she just does not believe it of herself, I think. But you know what's funny is like, I feel like when she doesn't think about it, and I think maybe that's the moments where we see it, and she doesn't, and I think Spencer has seen it, she doesn't think about it, and then she's just like- She's cool. She's, she's cool, everything. like she's witty, she's witty, she's like super smart, like she, um, she's creative like it, it there's there's things there and i think when she doesn't think about it it's natural but then when you start think when she starts thinking about it then she starts to self-sabotage and then yep. she starts in her own way and she does it it's it's very much of an extreme i think we all do that like you know self-sabotage self-sabotaging and getting in our own way but i think with olivia there's more of an extreme there where she does it extra heavy i mm-hmm. think but yeah it, it's like it's there like olivia all of the great qualities and positive qualities are there that's why we root for her but she's got to believe that and that's another thing if she doesn't believe it she gotta then- believe it she is freaking Spencer can't be the only one stunning. her style is amazing she's right. super creative she's a great friend like right Seth don't even have real friends to go off of so i'm just like how did you become such a great friend because you have no real friends until spencer Jordan wasn't even a good friend to you. <laughs> your brother, that's your twin. <laughs> but Olivia has been a great, I was, cause I feel like people learn how to be great friends by having great friends. So when I look at Olivia and I'm just like, how the hell did you become such a great friend with this? Like, this is all you had to work with? Right, oh, which means that lemon, there's- Lemonade out of lemons? Right, which is like, there has to be a good, there has to be a good kind of sense of self there. It's there, but there's just so much other stuff piled on top of that. And it's a lot of the, you know, sort of the the, the, the darkness or the negative feelings and thoughts that I think she lets consume her. Um, which I mean, it's relatable. That's why it's like, it's not, it's never a criticisms and attacks on Olivia. We, you know, you want her to win and you want her to thrive, but she's got to want that for herself. And it's very frustrating to watch a lot of the times. It's like, Olivia, girl, find the light, find the light, please. <laughs> <laughs> and I've said this in some it. of my videos, like I've literally said in some of my videos that some of the things that Olivia has done has literally taken me back to moments in my own life. And Vegas was for me, choosing unhappiness i was like this is your simple ass erica like you literally i remember the relationship i re- like i remember it down to t i'm just still to this day like wow you, you literally saw happiness and unhappiness and was like yeah i'm gonna go over here and it's the most disappointing thing like i can look back now and i'm not like beating myself up about it or whatever because i live and i learn but to see it play out on screen is just like wow wow okay okay and and that's honestly what elicits a lot of my reactions from olivia is because i do feel her like i get that this is an option because of where you are in your life like you making this decision there are two things that you could do. She has been choosing <laughs> the, the one that's going to impact her not the best way more times than not. Um, but I get how her circumstances have set her up for that. I just want her to choose herself and choose better more often than she doesn't. And oh my gosh, there's another thing. <laughs> I feel like people are gonna be bad. <laughs> but uh, I see a lot of Olivia selfless. Olivia is a selfless character. Olivia is selfless. And what's is that funny part of the is problem? I used to, <laughs> but what's funny is I used to, I used to really, really I used to think Olivia could do no wrong in, in season one. And then the rewatch has really helped really, you know, shape my perspective more and, and sort of see things in a different way where is Olivia selfless or is she just as she's just as selfish as everybody anybody, any other character on the show in terms of We've seen her run from conflict and run from, you know, confrontation in order to not deal with it at all. And that is more, yeah, you can say it's for other people's benefit, but it's also for her benefit because if it, if she doesn't have, if she runs away from it, then she doesn't have to deal with it either. It's not just, I'm just trying to protect everybody, which I'm not saying is not a reason. Mm-hmm. But like, for example, Vegas, you know, my first thought watching it was like, oh, well, 
Yeah, you know, she was trying to, you know, protect Layla and Asher. And then I remember watching your video and I was like, wait a minute, protect them from what? Like, <laughs> this is what? what are we protecting? Who, what? She was barely with Asher and Layla and Spencer were not together. So not what together. Was she, what was she Hadn't really- been together for months. Right. I'm like, granted, the situation, looking at it, it's, it's a little complicated. You could say it's a little messy because everybody's dated and liked each other or whatnot. But in terms of that moment, what had happened had already happened. Right. (laughs) And even if you didn't, for me, even if she didn't decide to get in a relationship right then and there, the choice to not stay and have a conversation and actually communicate all the stuff that you actually have been carrying with you any damn way, that to me was the biggest issue. I didn't need them to get into a relationship right then and there. I didn't need her to be like, oh my God, yes, by all means. But the fact that you just didn't have a conversation and then two whole months went by and you avoided this man and you did this and did that and all of this stuff happened. I'm just like, wow. And then literally they didn't have like a real conversation about it until episode eight. It was like, it. There was, she literally ran away in Vegas and they never talked about it until it all blew up. And, and that, the people were like, oh, Spencer sent a taster. That's what episode one was. Like, <laughs> and what did she do there? Got up and ran and jumped. Oh my God. I, I'm saying, that episode, that episode, that video when I did where it hit different when you rewatch it. When I tell you how on fire I was watching episode one of season three after seeing Vegas. <laughs> like I remember, like when the for, when the show came back, when season three came back, and I watched that episode, and I was like, I thought her jumping on Asher was unnecessary. But then seeing episode seven, I was like, I, it makes you look at Olivia totally different. I'm sorry to the Olivia stands, but it does. Y'all cannot justify her erratic movement from episode one to episode eight with the contents of episode seven. Like she couldn't even like just have a conversation with Spencer. And I think I remember saying on Lexi's podcast, like she chose violence when she jumped into Asher's arm. She didn't have to do all that. Oh, and violence. And listen, Spencer was wrong. No, Dead nobody's wrong. saying Spencer was right for getting back. And my thing is I hold him more accountable for getting back into a relationship with Layla, knowing everything that he knew from um, Vegas. I can feel more for him with him sleeping with Layla right after what happened with Olivia. I think it's flaw still, it's dead ass wrong. He didn't need to sleep with her, but I can understand why. Just in the heat of the moment, the emotions were high. And if it was anybody else, he, he probably wouldn't have. He would not have done it. And when I tell you when Daniel said that on his podcast, I was like, thank you, Daniel, because they read me for filth when I said this in my video breakdown. They literally read me for filth. I literally said, if it was anybody else that walked through that door, that would not have happened. Yeah, whatever, Erica, Spencer is just trash. No, you don't know. You just always want to let Spencer off the hook. Daniel Ezra gets on his Hangout podcast. You know, if it was anybody else, I don't think Spencer would have done that. (laughs) And everybody sees the light. See that that hangout podcast was such a confirmation. I was like, okay, oh my! So we Shout out to Daniel Ezra. You a real one podcast. because you got me out of some hot water. Like people were okay. like really coming for me until you confirmed a lot of things. And I have never spoken to Daniel Ezra a day in my life, y'all. Yes. So, right. So it, it's just like, and you know, I was like, yeah, she she chose violence when she, you know, she got the ball rolling, like. Spencer, I don't think if they would have had a conversation, just like just hypotheticals, if they would have, if she would have just just stayed her ass where she was at anytime he was trying to talk to her and just had a conversation, just an honest conversation, maybe not getting into a relationship or like, you know, I love you, you know, I love you too, like none of that, but just having a conversation of what happened and why you why you ran away and haven't talked to me since, just all of that, I think things might have worked played out differently. Yeah. Maybe. Or maybe not, but we we didn't get that chance because Olivia just was like, nope, nope, shutting a it track down. Track star, okay. And I was a like, track star. She chose violence because, I, you know, it was like he tried to talk to her at the mural painting, and then it was like he tried. He went to the house, obviously not trying to, you know, see her, but Jordan or whatnot. But ended up seeing she was back together with Asher and I think that at that point it was like all right she don't want to talk about it so I'm <laughs> that just was it to... he was like oh bet <laughs> right and 
it's then and it's like Layla reaches out to him I think before then and it's like she actually wants to talk to him to air you know clear the air about what happened in mm -hmm. Vegas as opposed to Olivia who's like mm -mm, no uh, Vegas didn't happen I don't want to talk about it nothing happened da, 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 da. and then that moment with Layla and Spencer happens you know mm -hmm. the differences between Layla and Olivia in that sense where Layla's like listen I just want to talk about it and clear the air and just know where we stand and which yep. is all I think Spencer was trying to do with Olivia yep. <laughs> oh, while also lusting I mean he he definitely like, was he I thought he was I thought that honestly, after going back and watching it, I was so proud of Spencer, even with his missteps, because he didn't let her running break him the way I thought it would from what we saw. I the mean, I would have pursued her, <laughs> but the fact that he con continued to pursue a conversation with her and mm -hmm. tried his best to not act different, I was just like, this is gross. Are you kidding right. me? Yeah. His and daddy left him and then died. Like, Right. Let that would have happened to me. Oh, you don't want to talk to me? You don't exist. That's it. It's like maybe yes. two times, maybe three times I'll try. But then after the fourth time, I'm like, all right, never mind. I'm not doing all that. All right. I'm that's it. it. That's it. I'm that's all. And I and I do give him credit for that because I think that, that that shows a lot of um, growth with his character. Rounding out the conversation about Olivia, because we mm -hmm. could talk about Olivia all I know, day. All day. <laughs> Um, I think that also, and I make this comment a lot in the comment sections, I'm not sure if I have done it in a video yet, but I do believe that it's not like official or anything, but I do believe that they're being strategic with these seasons. I feel like season one was Spencer's season where we saw him go through the most and have the most dramatic changes and all of the volatility around, you know, his behaviors and his decisions and all of that. In season two, I felt like it was Layla's turn. This is now season three and it has been proven to me that this is Olivia's turn. So one thing that I want to be able to spotlight for people is that in speaking about Olivia in the season, and yes, I have made, I make videos every single day, y'all. I talk about very, very specific niche things. So sometimes it's gonna feel like I'm focusing on something that I'm actually not. Cause if you look at it, I actually went back and had to really, really, really quick caveat. I had to go back and look and I'm like, are all my videos about Bolivia? No, literally not. No. I make so many videos. So there are a good amount of them about them, but literally 60 to 70% of my videos are either about the whole entire cast or specific other people. I think that this season is really about Olivia's journey, Olivia's art, Olivia's growth, which is why we're seeing such really harsh swings to the left and swings to the right with her and her personality. And listen, we got 19 episodes and then we're on going into episode 14. Tonight, when you guys will see this video, it'll be the, the night that episode 14 team premieres so we got six more episodes to go through this with olivia and then hopefully it'll be on to the next i'm hoping that season four is jordan and whatever he got oh god <laughs> girl good night but i can't just, jordan i can't <laughs> but just know that like i really do think that while it has been wild and crazy i think that this season has on purpose been a focus on olivia and how far she can go Mm -hmm. that's a good point that's actually you pointing that out that's a really good point it really has like this is this is her season like a lot of people have said this is her season and I think why like you said it feels so volatile at times and why it's such extremes to one one side to the other and that's very indicative of Olivia's personality and sort of the barometer she's been operating on where it's mm -hmm. one extreme to and now we're seeing the other extreme and hopefully trying to find the balance hopefully by the end of the season there's some kind of glimmer of she's starting to find the balance but we're yeah. still on the other extreme <laughs> of where she you know on the like full throttle yeah you know, doing too much which going into is a good segue into the predictions because yes you know, with episode 14. <laughs> Let's jump into them, honey. Because, <laughs> listen, when we get the announcement of Miss Wendy, I was like, oh, y'all coming back off of this last hiatus. Like, okay, y'all were pissed, but we got you. Like, I feel like the writers literally came down, like, came to the writers' room this season and was just like, we're going to do whatever we want. Okay. And they have. <laughs> and okay. we have to just go with it and I'm honestly I'm excited but I'm also very nervous before I even because I've done my predictions video tell me some of the things that you're looking forward to most Naya in episode 14. I'm really looking forward to being introduced to Miss Wendy Fine. I am very that is probably what I'm most excited for because 
I think you have talked about in, you know, I've also wanted more Laura and more dive into Laura. And while she's getting on my nerves, you know, um, in these last, you know, past couple of episodes, we were on common ground now. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with Laura now. Um, but seeing just a little bit of where she comes from and sort of maybe what a lot of her maybe thinking is or approach to things when it comes to the law and sort of her job and sort of getting that perspective from her mother and and then just also her mother just being thrown into this whole situation with the body cam footage and that fiasco and sort of what Laura is having to deal with um, behind the scenes and also just the dynamic with Olivia. I'm just really excited because it's going it's going to be good. Like, it's going to be very interesting to see the, the workings of that and how Wendy Fine feels about it. The fact that they primed us with her and Laura are completely different professionally has me on edge. Okay. It literally has me on edge. So I'm just like, so what is Mama Fine coming in here talking about? Because Laura is so progressive. Laura... We were, we were, I wasn't too sure either, y'all. I ain't even gonna hold you. She was holding that footage, and I was just like, well, girl, what was going on? I totally understand where Olivia came from with that and, like, not knowing. And we don't get privy to a lot of stuff, but we should have known better because, look, Laura hasn't given us any reason to doubt her up until now. So I totally get that. But for Laura to be this person who is an ally, who is for the cause, who wants to use her power for good, and I'm just like, she's the opposite? So we finna get this conservative, all lives matter, prosecute Olivia. Like what has been, oh my word. Like that's literally what's running through my brain right now. So while you're excited to see more from Laura's point of view in reference to her family and more just from her story period, what concerns you about Wendy? <laughs> mm, um, probably what you said, like just seeing how she could be on the completely different end of the spectrum like everything that we're fighting against sort of um just in the in the system as a whole like um especially when it comes to um i was say you know uh just white people in positions of power and just you know we've seen laura i think laura i gave laura a good reading um in episode 11 um because i just wasn't really sure um about her motives and i think uh, just sort of in the conversation with Grace, I think she was the thing, just thinking on certain things were a little misguided. Um, and I think with Wendy coming, her mom coming into the picture, I think we can maybe get an insight of maybe why Laura's had a little bit of a, just maybe not as aware, because I feel like Laura just wasn't as aware as she probably should have been. Be. And sort mm -hmm. of coming from her mother who, you know, um, is I think in, you know, the legal system, sort of where she maybe got some of that thinking from, from her mom. And I think I I thought, I was trying to give Wendy a break. Like maybe she could be completely like, no, burn it all down, burn the system, burn it all down. It needs to all be rewritten and you know, the system, it sucks. But I was, you know, that's just, that was a thought, a far, far thought. I don't think that's what she's about to give. <laughs> I think she's about to give no. the opposite of Laura <laughs> and the opposite of what we need and what we want. And I'm scared because then Olivia comes into play where it's like, like you said, her mom could very much be like, no, you need to prosecute your child because your child did the wrong thing. And it's just that, that, that is that. No trying to look deeper or look further. It's just, no, your child was wrong and she needs to be held accountable. And sort of that going very much against Laura and who she is, not only, you know, um, as a person, but as just as a mother. Mm -hmm. just, just saying, especially just, because she's trying to be a better mother, especially right. given all that has happened, child. And see, it just seemed like maybe we've seen Laura drop the ball when it comes to Olivia and her kids a lot of the times, maybe seeing how maybe her mother has maybe dropped the ball with her. And sort of just, sure. just the learning, like just, you know, being taught and, you know, things from your parents and passing that on to your kids. I think just seeing that yeah, um, from her mother. So I'm, I'm scared though. I, as much as I'm excited, I'm scared. Cause I think- Are Wendy you? <laughs> Are you more scared for Wendy or Carrie? Oh, Carrie, hands down. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, I've been very vocal about Carrie on these internets. I, I'm, I, I don't, not feeling her vibe. I feel like you know a lot of stuff is trying to cover or not cover, but take or not take away, but 
it's preparing us for Carrie. Like all this stuff is, you know, Carrie's not a big deal right now. She's in the background, but she's definitely giving me bad vibes. I've said single white female vibes. And Listen. I'm scared of Carrie. There's- Listen. I I'll take Wendy. <laughs> I will take Wendy. I will take it. Because <laughs> at I least take Wendy, it. Because at least Wendy, I feel like you know, there's not a method to the madness, but I feel like I mean, Carrie. We don't know what her motives are. We don't know what kind of energy she's bringing in. Like it just feels like real potential unstable energy. The last time we saw her, she was, you know, she was not ready to get out of rehab and basically almost, you know, tried to kill herself or you know um cut herself to stay in rehab we didn't see her in a great place when we last saw her wendy this is a fresh pair of eyes you know wendy's established she's you know a lawyer yeah and (laughs) my thing about wendy is like if she is like this adversary right i do think that that's going to be necessary because even if like her and olivia bump heads i think that that's going to help her better find the middle So if she's far right and Olivia's far left and Olivia has to go up against her grandmother in this way, then that's going to help her realize like what battles are worth fighting, what arguments are worth fighting, and where is she just an idiot and you're never going to be able to get through, so let her just be an idiot, right? With Carrie, with a person who you don't, you really can't understand and does have this like unstable energy... And like you said, you not you don't know what their motives are. You have no idea what they want. So you cannot figure out what's your way out. And Layla, like for one thing, Carrie herself scares me. But then when we're meeting Carrie again, scares me. Because one, we have not had any smoke with, with Layla in a very long time. She has been very quiet, which means something's coming. And then two, she's, cop- she's popping up in the moment when Layla is starting a journey to be able to deal with and heal from what happens now with Bolivia. Layla hasn't had to really deal with it because she's just now getting back to a place of friendship with Olivia. She's just now starting to put herself back in a place to see it. Right. And she has not been able to prep herself or like sit with her feelings or process or do anything. So on top of all of the feelings that she has around that in her life that she had because I think that Layla loved her life she loved her little best friend and she loved her boyfriend and going walking down the hall hand in hand like y'all gotta understand like she enjoyed that she misses that now she has to mourn that because that's not happening again and then we're gonna drop this young lady this crazy ass young lady on her lap and like okay so also deal with this right Mm -hmm. and I think I'm sorry what she (laughs) when I saw her pop up at that door Erica I was like oh hell no, I was like, and this was is all too bad, hard. all bad, way too, hard. way too hard, unannounced. Like I said, like she was trying to like popping up on somebody's doorstep, trying to book a room. Like she was like <laughs> trying to book a room at the Hampton Inn. Like, girl, we haven't seen you since episode to season two. What are what are we doing? Like, uh, no. And I, I just think Carrie is not about to give what a lot of people want her to give. She's not about to give, a, you know, Layla a new love interest or or support. You know, no and not in a positive like, way not in a positive she's not about to feed into a live i mean i keep trying to confuse them layla with anything positive it, it's just not it, it's i don't know what people want her to give or think that she's gonna give but i it, a lot of the consensus is carrie is bad news and she's got to go and it seems like she's bad news popping up she's going to keep popping up through the rest of this season <sighs> And when you, what you're saying, if she's trouble, she's not just trouble for Layla. She is also trouble for Spencer for and group. Olivia. For the group, yes, yes. For this group and that honestly, is already I, fractured. Yeah, I don't see them going down the route of making Layla have an issue, an outward issue with Bolivia, right? Like, I feel like they're going to have her try to process that on her own. Carrie becomes the way that Layla can actually, or they can express the things that we know that are actually happening within Layla's mind, what she might be feeling, what she might be seeing. If she has revenge on her mind, whatever it is that possibly could happen darker, from Layla, yeah. her darker it's going to come through Carrie, all of it. Yeah. And yes. not that I think that Layla's going to tell her to do any of these things. I think that the writers are going to use Carrie as a device to do all of those things. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see. I feel like in my heart of hearts, I feel like they're going to build up this story with Carrie. I don't think it's going to be like 
I, I don't, I feel like she's not, her story is not about to be done at the end of the season. Nope. I feel like it's a buildup. And I think that she's going to become a real issue t- throughout the rest of the season. And I think she might be in at least the first half of the next season. season I, I think it's not a story that's just about to be wrapped up at the end of the season, especially since we've heard that the season finale is about to be a lot. There's going to be a lot of cliffhangers and a lot going on, and she's definitely got to be one of them. And <laughs> I'm having all these kind of crazy thoughts about what Carrie is about to do <laughs> at the end of this season. Like, she's about to lock somebody up in her basement. I don't know. Like, <laughs> Carrie is just Some gonna- of the, Oh my God, the theories <laughs> in the comment section, I'm like, y'all are going real uh, pretty little liars real quick real like y'all like so and so is dead carrie got them and i'm like please no i don't need body dropping i, I don't need that on all american like Funny. i don't <laughs> i just feel like carrie might be a real issue where olivia and layla the group i need to tag team get their pitchforks they might have to deal with carrie because <laughs> carrie is given all kind of like just obsession high key obsession like she might be in love with layla she wants layla's life she wants to steal layla's face like it's just a lot it's of a just, lot that could it's happen that it's like oh what are you why are you here why are you here sis? you don't feel good you could have texted me send a dm come on yeah no i'm definitely not looking forward to her popping up as i think we've all predicted no. that she's gonna no. pop up at friends given and I'm not looking forward to that. Just her being in the group and like in the group dynamic where the group dynamic is still up in the air and we bring in unsolicited, unknown energy to stoke, to stir the pot. Like we don't need that. They do enough of that amongst themselves. We don't need you. (laughs) And I'm so ready. They they do not have enough friends. I'm so ready for everybody to make peace because y'all are stressing me out. It's like we're friends and I can't go to this person's house and I can't do this and I can't talk to this person because this person got problems with this person. I was like, oh, Friendsgiving's episode? Bad. We're going to all be back together. Nope. Of course. There can never just be just a... (laughs) It can never be smooth sailing. Like we just gotta have no. Let's just drop this person that nobody else knows. But Layla has this weird connection with, and she don't even know her like that. And she's just gonna pop up at the friends giving with everybody and stressing everything the hell out. <laughs> just like I'm I not can't. looking forward to it at all. I can't. Well, before we wrap up, Naya, I do have a couple of other questions that I want to ask. This has been a freaking amazing conversation, and um, y'all look out for more of these conversations these are going to be the all-american talkbacks where we can really dive in and just talk about things how we feel what we're thinking and all of that jazz this is the very first one with one of our erica zane insiders naya who are you most proud of up until right now i'm gonna go with layla because i feel like layla was someone that i had to grow to have a connection with and grow to love because in season one I was not a Layla fan at all just because I felt like I I couldn't connect with her she wasn't someone that was tangible I didn't feel like it always felt like surface and then we start to unpack and unpeel the layers season by season and I feel like Layla has grown a lot I think people don't want to give it to Layla yeah she's not a good friend but hopefully we're working through that but Layla has grown a lot and I think she's in a much better place than she was obviously in season two. And I think even in in season one, where I think a lot of her foundation was there, but you know, she had her own stuff that she didn't unpack and her own stuff that she was not dealing with and head on. And, And definitely that manifested into a dark place in season two. But I think her working through that, and I wish we would, we could see more therapy scenes, but you know, that little tidbit where we, we hear that she is still going to therapy and it is something that she's still working on and working through and you know Layla she's on her her boss ish and you know starting this record label and trying to do right by Coop and (laughs) we're going to do a whole other episode about Tamia because not today the energy is good we're not doing it it today (laughs) but her really you know just I, just really growing and and I think she's definitely matured and I'm just I've been very um happy with her growth and her art and um yeah I, I would say Layla I would say I'm most proud of of Layla this this <sighs> so far thus far for me this far it has been a neck and neck thing with Spencer and Layla 
Um, but I'm going to pick Layla since you already broke down all the reasons why we should be <laughs> proud of Layla. I want to pick Spencer because I feel like he went specifically in this season. He went from a very depressed place. Like when we started this season, I was like, who the hell is this? <laughs> I did not recognize Spencer. Like, of course, I recognize him visually. But as a person, I was just like, who is this guy? And to know all that he has gone through in the summer and then through the season and how he's been able to surrender and allow himself to be helped and coached and changed and evolve through all of that. I just feel like it's freaking chef's kiss. So Spencer is the character that I'm most proud of up until this moment. Now my follow-up question, who do you think is going to be the character that you're most proud of over the course of this season? It's gonna be, I think a neck and neck for Spencer and Olivia because I think like all the reasons you said for Spencer I don't have to say anything more and and just to see a young black man um on TV um being able to work through a lot of these things and do it in a very healthy and positive way and to show that example um is very important and um I think the character of Spencer has done that beautifully um with Olivia I think we've seen a lot of, uh, I think we've seen some breakthroughs just like in, in, I think small ways. I think for an example, her conversation with Asher in episode 13, where, you know, he was like, well, honesty sucks. And she's like, yeah, it definitely can, but it's the only way to move forward. And we have seen, you know, Olivia struggle with the truth, you know, um, and being, being comfortable with sharing the truth as hard as it can be. I think Olivia, even though she's a work in progress, I think from episode one, where we, you know, we're introduced to her to, I think just to the end of this season, I think there's just within the season, there's been, I think a lot of of growth and a lot of her recognizing some things in herself that she's got to work through. Although we're still in the trenches right now, I think, She's a lot, she's a lot, I think she's a little bit more aware just in yeah. terms of like, you know, past mistakes and past things that could have been avoided had she have done certain things. I would say Spencer and Olivia just throughout this whole season, I would probably most, probably going to be most proud of. I think if the writers are doing what I believe that they are doing, I think by the end of the season, I will probably be the most proud of Olivia. I am hoping that by the end of the season, we see her learn from all of these mistakes that she's made this season. And the way that we will see that is how does she speak to it? How does she move differently? How, to me, the best way to show that you learned or evolved or apologized is change behavior. So I'm looking forward to seeing how Olivia exits season three. Yeah, me too. And like, I, I forgot to say this, but even like just taking more accountability, you know, mm-hmm. obviously in episode nine was the first time we saw her take accountability for her actions and how it hurt other people. You know, um, yeah. that's a big thing. Um, Cause it's not something I don't think she did a lot of in the past, just taking accountability. How have my actions um, contributed to, you know, um, to not so great things, not so healthy things, not so positive yeah. things. And her starting the, the the process of that, I think is, is a major breakthrough, you know? Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I think Olivia's gonna get there. It's just stressful right now, cause I'd rather it happen right now <laughs> because we've had so much um, Olivia turmoil, but obviously it's with a purpose and for a reason. But like you said, it, it is her season. So going through all of those stages and the extremes of all of just her as a character is just what the season has to be about. So hopefully, like you said, at the end of this season, you know, there's that nice glimmer that we can go into the next yeah. season. Like, okay, <laughs> she's she's now, she's on an even, an even track. Cause right now it's like up, down, up, down, sideways, all around like and, and i'm and i'm stressed it. for you olivia <laughs> i am stressed for you sis. Yes. <laughs> what storyline this season made the least amount of sense to you so far <laughs> um I'm, I'm gonna say there it's two i'm gonna have to say uh you know good old uh, Raggedy Ann as I call him you know from the rewatches Asher and Vanessa I really don't think we need that storyline um, I could have used without it 
hopefully it's done it's buried after episode 13 i really I just didn't it enjoy it okay. i don't think we needed that i don't think really it did anything for asher's character it made me like more annoyed with him and then the added layer of vanessa and then sort of the whole like one episode little love triangle that was trying to happen between jj vanessa and asher that was definitely the the storyline that made the least sense to me okay um, and I'm gonna have to say Jordan and this whole like this is the end of the world because I'm not playing football. Oh, yeah. I thought you were about to say no, Simone. Not Jamone. <laughs> not Jamone. Not Jamone. Um, that makes a lot more sense than this whole uh football is my life, football is life, I'm going to die without football. <laughs> that is really irritating me. And it seems like that is about to be his like little journey for the rest of this season. And I'm not looking forward to it because Jordan gets on my nerves as it is. So the whole football thing and like him being so fickle about that, it's really just irritating me. So I'm gonna say that was unnecessary. And it is okay. going to be unnecessary. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, the I totally, I feel you around that. Cause I, I have said this in multiple videos, Jordan, you don't know what you want and it, that's fine. But just at least be honest with it. Don't try to throw up a tantrum in this episode randomly because now all of a sudden you you sure, sure that you want it, but then tomorrow you're not gonna want it anymore. Right. Um, so I totally get that for sure. And yeah, y'all already know how I feel about Basher. So that's that. Oh, the one that didn't make the most sense to me or it made the least amount, the least amount of sense was Mo a coop? You were about to, yeah. But I was, it was set yeah. up to do well. I just right. feel like, where, it, where are we going with right. this? This is a right. grown, you know what, woman who I now got you into my clutches. You trust me and I get to ruin your life. Like, girl, you could have ruined her now. life in so many other ways very quickly. Like, get on with it. What, do what you're going to do and go. <laughs> like, yes, that was in the back of my mind because just the way that it was set up at the end of season two, it felt very sinister. Like, oh, she's about to yes. be like dangerous, like dangerous vibes. And it just, it hasn't been giving. It hasn't, the it story hasn't been given. And I, and I feel like Mo's story as a, a community activist, as a leader, as a pillar of the community makes more sense. Like, just be good, sis. Like, right. Trying to be Olivia Pope for the for the <laughs> folks, for the community. Like, but that, that, I can get behind that. But like, then all of a sudden it's like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm still out for Tamia. Like, I'm about to get that girl. I'm about to ruin her life. It's just real, like, girl, at your big age. Like, what happened to all at of- At your big age, at your big <laughs> career level, at your Why? big awareness. Like, you also operate in a space of wokeness, but this is also something that's on your agenda. Make right. it make sense. It doesn't make sense. Like, it just, yeah. So that, yeah, I definitely agree. I was thinking about that, but I was like, I feel like she's going to say that. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I still don't know. We're at episode, about to be episode 14. And I still don't understand what's going on between Mel Coop. Is that ever yes. going to be tied up? I don't know. And I don't I, really I care. Love it. I would love for <laughs> it to just fade to black, honestly. I would love for Coop to wake up and just be like, oh, I bumped my head this whole time. I'm really, I got sense now, y'all. And I'm good. And I would be perfectly fine with that. Yeah, I that agree. That could be the, the holiday summer storyline. Okay. Right. And my last question is, what is the storyline that you have been most obsessed with this season? I'm going to have to say, like, Spencer's, like, mental health storyline has been, like, when I just, like, just hearing that he was going to go to therapy and see Dr. Spears. Shout out to Dr. Spears, because we need more of Dr. Spears. He needs to come see all of the, all these, all these kids, all these folks, because these people are out here struggling. And the current <laughs> struggling. Can we just go ahead and fill your calendar up? We got you. We got your whole salary. It's all good. Right. Like they all need they all need guidance. They all need help and guidance and therapy. Um, but yeah, just hearing just hearing that there was going to be that mental health storyline. I was just so excited. Um, because it's just it, it's such a necessary topic that needs to be talked about. And I think often in content and TV and film, it's been depicted in I think very dramatized ways and very extreme ways that don't really I think show the whole scope of mental health and sort of the nuances of it and then specifically to see a young black man you know being in therapy and dealing with his mental health and unpacking his trauma physically and then emotionally I think was just so exciting for me to see and just seeing him in therapy and just being so open and like open to going to therapy it just made me so it made my heart happy because i was like yeah. yes we need more of this and to just 
see it so beautifully done at, um, using Spencer as a vessel was just chef's kiss for me. That was what I've been most obsessed with. I just need more. I need to see more yes. Dr. Spears. I, I and, right now. <laughs> listen, and that is my storyline I'm most obsessed with as well for all of the reasons that you said. Thank you so much, Naya, for joining me for this conversation, this talk back, this very first one. You set the tone. I am so excited to do more of these. I absolutely love these so much. I'm so I'm so happy to have done this. I'm so happy to be here. Sorry if I have if I sound like I have rambled throughout this whole video. Um, Erica Vane make, makes up for most of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just be rambling. But yes, I'm so happy to be here. So happy to do this. So happy to expand this and be a part of this. Just beautiful. Yes. Thank you for having me. We will be having more conversations, y'all. It will be one-on-ones. It'll be panel conversations. So be on the lookout for that. I will put nice information in the description box as well so that you can follow this amazing, positive, beautiful human uh, and keep up with what she has going on. Again, look out for her in the comment section. She is now officially one of the Erica Vane TV insights or Erica Vane Insiders and I'm so 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 happy to have her I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation be sure to add your thoughts your theories your opinions in the comment section down below you know how we do we jump down there we have even fuller dialogue even more conversations and I love doing that with you guys thank you so much for watching I'll have my full all-american playlist link for you right here so that you can get into it if you missed anything and as y'all can see we spicing it up so look out for more exciting content to come in the future. Bye. Bye. Why you so far away? Galaxy cast away. Watching you hopelessly.